Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew Zarin here, Sunday edition of the show. With me, my co-host, one of my favorite co-hosts, actually, second time on the show, Lance Storm. What's going on, Lance? Not too much. Just a uh, quiet Saturday in Calgary, Alberta, Canada. Or Sunday, I guess. Missed today. Uh, how cold is it there? Actually, we've been having, since the new year, the warmest winter I can remember. We're, I think, most days 10 to 15 Celsius, which would be 40 to 50 Fahrenheit every day. Oh, that's not bad. That's actually pretty warm. Yeah, there's no snow. It's great. Yeah, we're, we've been getting snow all day here in New York City. So uh, I, uh, I think we switched, switched locations for the day. Uh, Lance, <laughs> I want to first of all, I want to congratulate you. Uh, Impact Wrestling, you're starting, I believe, this week? Yeah, I'm at No Surrender on Saturday. I fly out on Friday. Very, uh, very cool. You're going to be there for No Surrender. Uh, you know, this is, you know, you're, you're a producer there, coach there, right? It says it in your bio. Sure, yeah. A little of everything. Um, you know, you were you were a WWE uh, before, you know, during prior to the pandemic. Uh, and how different do you think this job is going to be for you as far as producing the content? Well, I did, I think, three TV tapings for Impact as a producer before I went back to WWE. So it's like, I know what I'm getting into. And for the most part, the job is the same. It's just, it's a little easier to get done with the uh, fewer levels of people to go through to get things approved. You know, I'm I'm a pretty good friend of Scott Demore's, So it's, it's a little easier to uh, talk to Scott Demore, a much more relaxed uh, atmosphere, shall we say. <laughs> so that, that's a great segue into our first topic here. And that's uh, an article that was put out by Sean Ross Sapp uh, regarding morale issues. And, you know, you've been in, I think the last time you came on, came on we were, we were kind of talking about the differences in the, in the locker rooms, uh, different times, different decades, different companies. And you've been in, I mean, obviously you've been in impact. You've wrestled there, uh, you know, TNA, you've, you've seen what's going, what happened there. You've ECW, WCW, WWE, you know, these things come and go and uh, a lot of eyeballs on WWE right now because of the debacle that was the Royal Rumble. You know, how common is this that you start seeing, you know, the morale drop and then it goes up again? Uh, what What is your experience with this? Well, I, I think with me and, and again, even during my, my last run with WWE, it's I think there's a level of frustration that brings morale down when things are constantly changing because I know that's when I was least happy as a producer, when you think, you know what you're doing and you start putting effort towards that and then it changes and then it changes. And that frustration of never knowing for sure what's got to be done or what they want. And that's where your morale comes down because you don't feel like you're putting out your best work because you know, all day at television, if something's changing and you're in a scramble and you're, you're you know, it, it ends up being more about just trying to get it done in time than actually enjoying your work. And for most wrestlers, it's like the job, the art, whatever you want to call it. It's like, that is your joy. And yeah. if you don't get to relax and do that to your best ability, the joy goes away. So uh, the story here, WWE town frustrated with, a, the direction of the company, a veteran was quoted as saying, quote, nothing matters outside of four people, maybe. They never felt less heard, and their attempt to speak with Vince go ignored. Some town believe WWE is eventually uh, getting ready to sell. I mean, we've heard this for a while. But, you know, like, how accessible was Vince when you were there to the talent? You know, and obviously, some talent has more access than other talent. I mean... You know, I'm give you a great example. Uh, I, my consulting company, I have numerous clients uh, outside of the wrestling, right? My my shoot gig. Uh, and sometimes I pay more attention to certain clients that I feel that I'm. it's getting different results. Other ones I put in more effort to. You know, these are normal, common things. But how accessible is Vince to a mid-card guy? You know, someone coming up. That That's the impossible question to answer. Because it's different for absolutely everybody. You know, everybody has a different level of friendship, contact with Vince. And the busier the day gets, or the more 
time Vince has to spend with those above you, the less you get. So, you know, it's, it's impossible to say how much, because it, it all comes down to your relationship or how brave you are with trying to jump the line and get ahead of producers and everyone else that has to talk to Vince. Yeah, I, I find it uh, interesting, you know, when it's almost like, you know, when situations like this arise, you know, it becomes a, a, a snowball that keeps getting bigger and bigger and it turns into an avalanche. Uh, you know, listen, at this point, they've made the most money that they've ever made as a company. There was another story that came out that Vince is very happy with the product, apparently, and he doesn't see a problem. I don't know how accurate that is. Uh, I would never I don't think that he's a person that that feels that things are ever perfect uh, with with everything I've heard about him. You know, there's constant growth and constant change happening. Uh, I, I think when you it's a tale of two stories here. And one is what's being presented on television to the core audience. And the other one is what's being presented to the business, to the investors. And, you know, if you're looking as, as a company, as an investor front, uh, you're going to say, my God, I would be thrilled with the amount of revenue that they're generating. But these are guys that are not necessarily familiar with the TV product. So, you know, it goes, it's, it's two different stories here. Yeah, and I think more than ever before, wrestlers are more concerned about their match quality, the, the product that's getting put out, and probably more than ever before, at least in WWE, because the way income is structured now, it matters even less. So I think there's a, a conflict in what talent perceive as important and yeah. the company sees as important. And again, it's nobody's fault, but when your income is set, you're less concerned with the product quite probably. But I think more than ever before, wrestlers are more concerned with how they are portrayed on television, how the product looks, where I think if you went back to the 80s, as long as everybody was making money, I don't think the boys would have cared. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it, that, it, now it's a different story, right? It is. It's just a different mentality, I think, than ever before for the talent. And it's in an era where with the money guaranteed, it's like it's not as important to have those angles that really grip people. And I think that's what the talent really want. But it's I can see where those that are, you know, counting the bank accounts don't care as much. Did you did you ever feel like that over there when you were performing over there when you went over that you know what what was the feel then what did was it the same type of complaints that that we see today No it was it was different like it it was I think too it was hard because when I first came over right it's the invasion and there was a I don't know if conflicts the word but a we're trying to fit in. We're be trying to become a part of this new family and not all of the new family was welcoming. So it was, it was, you were more concerned with that and you didn't, you know, the WCW guys were just trying to fit in and be a part of something where we're not going to be running to the office complaining about stuff. And, you know, the WWE locker room, I think right before the invasion was probably the best morale they'd ever had you know, riding the wave of Austin McMahon and making more money than anyone had ever dreamt of making before. So on the whole, the WWE locker room morale was great and it was us just trying to fit into it. So it was a completely different situation. You know, yeah. Uh, before we go to a break, you got my spidey senses tingling. Every time I, I, I hear invasion, I, I've been trying to fantasy book that invasion storyline for the last seven years on the air. <laughs> and every time I think I've gotten it down, I, I realize that it's terrible. There was no way out of it. <laughs> I would love to sit down with you and just just go over that entire debacle that was the invasion because it, it was the first time that we would have ever gotten a chance to to see the you know the best of the best. And obviously, contractual reasons prevented a lot of those guys from coming over. And after a couple of months, it just went away. It, it's unbelievable. Yeah, it was yeah, it was crazy. Um, Dave uh, just did a show with Garrett and they mentioned how um, because they, they had a guy on who had actually was consulting with ideas and angles. For Lance, WWE. why don't we take this? We got to cut to a break. We'll, we'll, we'll pick that up after the break. Guys, Wrestling Observer Live. Andrew's Aaron here with my co-host Lance Storm. We'll be right back. Version.